Hi everyone, welcome back. It's hard to believe a week went by already, but uh, here we are. I promise you we do a multi-part series on flight testing your amateur built aircraft. Last week we did aircraft prep, and I think the week before we did engine prep. What we're gonna do now is talk about ground prep for the pilot, okay? Really, really important. And then next week we'll follow on with the actual first flight and talk about the things that need to happen there. So we're not going to talk about flying as much today because one of the most important things to make certain that first flight is successful is to prepare the pilot. And I can't tell you how critical that is. You're going to be flying a new aircraft. You're going to be in it for the first time, regardless of the transition training you may have had. Everything's going to be new and, and most likely different in your aircraft. Speaking of transition training, please take the time to get some transition training. Uh, just don't go make a flight with your buddy or something and then think you're going to make that first flight by yourself. There's just, you know, the airplanes are very expensive today. There's a lot at stake. All right. So pay attention there. I would also tell you that, uh, you know, you really need to sit in your aircraft for at least five hours before you go make that first flight. And you ought to be able to reach for everything that you need to maybe react to for an emergency. Uh, with your eyes closed. There should be a few things that you create a checklist for that are called emergency action items. You know, on the airlines and the military, you actually have to have those memorized and you have to take a blindfold test and be able to touch everything in that cockpit before you can go fly. I think that's a really good best practice. I do that myself. I do it when I move between aircraft. I'll take time to sit there and remind myself which cockpit I'm in and where the controls are and which way they need to move. Things like the fire extinguisher. Make certain you've got the right one. The best thing to use are Halon or there are different variants of the Halon, but no ABC fire extinguishers. And then when it comes to you making that first flight, I know it's your creation. and We all want to just kind of go out and make that first flight ourselves. But you know, since uh, the last uh, order, 8130.2J, we've, we've been allowed to have an additional pilot in the aircraft, a safety pilot, a qualified pilot. I've made dozens of those. I think 60 first flights now with people. It makes the flight so much more relaxing for you and for the, it, just everything. Everything turns out much better. So sometimes a DAR uh, can do that for you if they're qualified. I know I won't. Uh, test fly an airplane that I haven't inspected. That's really, really important to do that. But let's talk about pilot prep in those five hours, what you're going to do. You're going to be sitting in that cockpit and you want to go through every possible scenario from startup to taxi out to shut down until you can just do them from memory. Okay. And if you get interrupted by something, you know, uh, smoke, an alarm, an audio alarm, we're going to talk about those in a bit. You want to know what you should be doing. And by the way, I tell everybody, just don't be quick to make a reaction to something. Check your watch first. Okay? I mean, you know, most lately uh, we've seen a couple of accidents where people didn't necessarily need to land the airplane, put it in a field, total the airplane with the engine running. Uh, it probably could have most likely made the airport in a number of these most recently. So take your time. Think through it. Fail some of your systems. What happens if you start that takeoff roll and you have no airspeed? Where's your abort? What are you going to do? Hopefully you've checked it on the ground. You got a pedostatic test there and you know the airspeed's going to work. But I have been in some aircraft where, you know, right about the time we lifted off, the airspeed just went to zero. Okay. It's, uh, you know, what are you going to do if that happens? You just don't want to do something silly. Most of these airplanes fly very, very well just by looking out the window, okay? We put all this fancy glass in there now, and we've got all these audio warnings. If they're not set right on that first flight, they're going to start screaming at you, and they can become a very big distraction. One of the things I've done, as I've written about this, you can look at some of the columns I've written on first flights. I think we referenced them in prior uh, videos here. But I actually had my granddaughter sit behind me with a balloon with a pin. And while you're busy working in that cockpit and thinking through things, when you least expect it, have the balloon pop or have somebody clap their hands really loud. Or you could just leave your compressor on in the shop if you're by yourself. When it kicks on or goes off, 
hmm, simulate the engine quitting right on takeoff roll. Again, we're not talking about actual airtime. We're talking about on the ground operations. Now don't spend a lot of time taxiing your airplane around, especially if you've got a new engine. If you've got a new engine, you want to minimize your time on the ground. For those of you who've put a used engine in the aircraft, I think that's wonderful. If you're at an airport where you can go taxi and play some, then do that. Uh, no high speed taxis. Those, especially with, uh, you know, your low time in this aircraft, again, this aircraft, okay, maybe not necessarily low time in type. But it is a new aircraft, and the most dangerous part of flying actually is right there at the landing and right there at takeoff. The aircraft, especially tailwheel, can be most unstable. So we want to avoid those. Uh, once you decide to take off, you're committed. Let's go. So if you're going to do any taxi tests, you know, keep them at half of rotation speed should be maximum. Maybe you won't get an airspeed indication there, especially with some of the glass cockpits they tend to only want to show airspeed above 25 knots you could glance down look at your airspeed most of us can guess 20 to 25 knots you know it's a little faster than a normal taxi speed but kind of keep it there and keep your head out the window be pay attention for things don't run up the temperatures on your engine uh get things too hot especially the new engine you want to keep those below 300 degrees if you're going to run that at all for those of you who do have a new engine, what you want to do prior to that first flight is make certain, one, you're ready to go before you start that engine. Strap yourself in the cockpit, get everything set, get your checklist set, and then if you, for those of you at a control tower, you're going to want to coordinate with the tower. No sense taxiing out there during a busy time and being on the hold line for a while. So get ready. Once you start that airplane up, you should be ready to go. One of the things I recommend is have everything set up in the cockpit with your frequencies. So when you power up everything, it's, it should be hopefully ready to go. You just don't want to waste time. Now, you don't want to rush. That's why I'm telling you you want to practice this multiple times without the engine running. Go through everything. Know what you're looking at. Touch things, etc. Work through it. Talk out loud. I talk out loud to myself a lot. By the way, that works very well. If an emergency does happen, I find myself talking to myself. It works. Right? So be ready to go. Again, don't rush it out there, but be ready to go so you're not spending a lot of time on the ground with the aircraft. Again, I can't emphasize enough the pilot. Do it when, you know, if you're going to fly by yourself, then spend these five hours in the cockpit without anybody else around. You've got to get yourself prepped for that. If you're going to use an additional pilot, just don't take your buddy. There actually is a sheet you have to fill out for the builder pilot and the qualified pilot. As I mentioned last week, one of the other things is a fuel flow test and compression test. You have to make those entries in the logbook. And then one of the things I would encourage everybody to do, it's actually part of the team that worked on this for quite a while, is the EAA uh, Home Built Council actually put out a whole flight test regime. It's a, it's a flight test. It comes with a book to explain everything. And then little uh, test cards that you can actually put on your knee pad while you're flying. Spend time before you go fly your airplane getting familiar with these. And then we'll talk about them in depth more next week. But this is actually going to take you through a very good flight test program. And one of the other things a new order allows us to do, if you're doing a task-based program, we no longer have to fly 40 hours just burning fuel going in circles. Most of our aircraft, a very thorough test program, even with the nice glass cockpits and everything, you can get done in 20, 25 hours, and you're going to have a really nice POH out the other end of this. It's a very valuable sales tool when you go to sell the airplane, and it's also just a very valuable tool for you as well as the owner pilot. So anyway, I hope it's valuable to you. Certainly don't hesitate to send questions. I'll try and answer them. Uh, but one of the other things you might consider doing is talk to other people who are flying the airplane. Ask on the forums what they've seen on first flights, what ground prep stuff perhaps they missed and should have done. As an example, for those of you with new engines, consider leaving the wheel pants off. It'll put more drag on the airframe, requiring more horsepower. It's going to help you seat those cylinder uh, uh, rings, the uh, uh, piston rings, a whole lot better by using higher power. Uh, during that first flight. Make certain you do a thorough pre-flight on this airplane. I think we talked about that a little bit last week. Do it again before you go fly it. All right? You're going to have fun. It's a big day to make that first flight. I, I guarantee you it's something you'll never forget. Uh, 
you'll certainly never forget it. If you don't do it right, you have a bad outcome. But the majority of first flights anymore are certainly very successful. Some of them, the highest accident rates are within the first eight hours. Most of them are due to fuel systems. We mentioned that last week. Unfortunately, I did lose a friend with an RV-10 door coming open on takeoff. You know, there are some scenarios you're going to want to simulate where if they happen, you're going to want to abort. Some things you cannot fix in the air, especially if you're by yourself, you're going to get hurt and maybe killed. Other things you can think about once you get in the air, and we'll talk about some of those things next week. But practice doing aborts. Call out what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, and when you're going to do it. And then practice it till you can do it in your sleep, and you're going to have a whole lot of fun. Thanks for listening.